The METAL SECTION! Metal. So, we're going to start out, this time we're switching around. I haven't listened to all of this album, I've only listened to the first track. So next we've got Insomnium, Winter's Gate. Pierce, go. Well, I have been a, a pretty damn big fan of Insomnium for ages, and I don't think they've ever released a bad album. And this continues that very, very strongly. I mean, unlike their previous albums, as far as I'm aware anyway, this is a straight up concept album. It's based around the concept of a bunch of Vikings going to Ireland looking for something that isn't actually there. <laughs> and as you just spoke from, you know, Viking themed lore, it generally doesn't end too well. And Insomnia decided that the best way to cover this story was to write a bitch and sweet metal album about it. <laughs> you saying it not ending well just reminds me of Looney Tunes and uh, What's Opera Duck. What did you expect from an opera? A happy ending? <laughs> Basically, the album essentially has been penned before they released it as being one big song. Mm. It's actually on a, the CD apparently does come as one single track, but if you did the digital download, it is split into parts. So it can go either way. It can be listened to in parts, but there's no this kind of thematic thing going through if you listen to it in the right order. Sounds a bit like if you were to try to listen to an audio book in parts and <laughs> not go from part one. <laughs> Well, I mean, I reckon you probably could listen to the individual parts separately, and no, it's still a psychological song, but the lyrics, you know, do have a kind of thematic structure throughout the entire album, so. Mm. If you want to listen to the story, then you probably can't anyway, because it's all death grass. <laughs> well, almost all. <laughs> but it's, in some of the lyrics are generally, you can gen, as far as death grass go, they're probably one of the easier ones to make out, so. Mm. We used to, we used to making out lyrics with Death Girl thing, then you'll probably be fine. <laughs> the Vita Special Edition, you also get the story in a... The Vita Special Edition, you also get the story in a... Mm -hmm. But, yeah, um, as you spoke from the story, it kind of starts out uh, the, kind of the heroic journey of these Vikings, and then things get worse and worse and worse, and the album naturally kind of builds up over time as it goes along. It kind of dramatically shifts in style now and then, uh, in turn with the events of the story, so some parts would be, like, really heavy. Followed up then by, you know, kind of melodic passage, or the other bits that are done with just basically just piano at some point, I think. More mm. But it kind of all builds up more towards the end of part six, the seven parts, where everything goes to shit. And yeah, it's kind of one of those swells of music that we mentioned in one of the reviews that we really like. And they're very, very good job of it. The last track kind of just deals with the aftermath of that. Mm. Yeah, I, I think it's a really, really good album. And. In the last couple of albums, well, not, well, the last album was really good actually. The album before that was kind of disappointing, but they've basically been going on the up again since then, which is nice. Yeah, the only reason I didn't listen through this album was I was my brain was starting to crumble after all the heavy albums that I'd listened to before. <laughs> yeah, tons of people getting onto in a minute is uh, intense, at least. <laughs> Jesus. But um, some people have said that. The reason this sound is kind of fresh is it doesn't necessarily sound that much like Insomnium. Mm -hmm. Which I think I can actually kind of agree with, actually. I mean, it's got kind of the signature sound of Insomnium, but it does sound a bit different. Presumably because of the way the songs are structured. And I think it does help, because one the only complaint I really had about Insomnium is I do have a tendency that most of the stuff does sound at least relatively similar. When the last album did try a few different kind of things, which did help it, which probably was an improvement on the one before that. Mm -hmm. But this... Comes of course is very fresh for them. Yeah, it is. And yeah, if you like melodic death metal and you like cool stories about Vikings and death, then yeah, check it out. <laughs> oh, winter. There's a lot of winter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as you expect from Insomnium, there's lots of heavy riffs, there's all manner of new link guitar passages everywhere. Something they're kind of known for is they do a lot of, kind of not necessarily solos, but they kind of lead, lead guitar, kind of the semi soloing all over the place. I'm sure it does have an actual proper term for that, but I can't think what it is right now. <laughs> Not a few solos strewn about the album as well. Mm. They don't feel out of place like a lot of solos can do in some songs. They fit in with the actual structure of the song and think, oh, this has come from like, singing about Vikings to having this really cool guitar solo. It can't really help but get to the end of part six and then just think, oh, this story is really depressing, but fuck, I can't help but headbang really, really hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how would you score uh, it? Uh, I would, um, I would be inclined to give it a five. Fair days. 
is pretty much what I'd expect from Insomnium, but that's probably why I love it so much, because, yeah, <laughs> I'm a really big Insomnium fan. I haven't seen him live again, it's been years. I didn't once, but it was like four or five years ago. Yeah, I've only heard bits and pieces of Insomnium before, well, still haven't listened through the whole album, I will after after the <laughs> review, it's just, I needed a break. <laughs> I'll probably listen through um, Meatloaf after this as well. Mm. We've covered that anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I would recommend it. If you can find it in a shop, I would recommend buying it. If you can ever bloody find the damn thing, because I had to download it because my local has never had it in stock. <laughs> Since I find the damn thing, I'm going to buy it. Always the way. Well, I could just technically order it online, but I like buying things in shops. Mm. Anyway, uh, next album, Meshuga, The Violent Sleep of Reason. Oh, oh boy! Ball of chugging metal directly to the skull. Yeah, this album is exhausting to listen to. It's a great album, but god damn, you, ne- you need a cigarette break after it. <laughs> I need a cigarette break, I don't even smoke. Yeah. <laughs> when... I've heard of some stuff from Meshuggah before, so I was expecting the, the heavy guitar chugging as they're kind of known for. This album does not hold back on that. Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen them live and this this is the sort of thing to expect. Um, they were playing at Bloodstock six years ago. Um, but yeah, it, it's one of those, if you like your metal on the more experimental side, because I, I suppose they fall into the math metal category. Kind of, it kind of jazz influence there that they're kind of known for. Yeah. Which is kind of, it's influence there, but it is most definitely straight up metal. <laughs> the influence is some outside metal and more in song structure than it is natural sound. Mm. But yeah, it's definitely uh, worth it. I mean, if you're not that into really technical metal, then you're not going to get along with Meshuggah, generally speaking, because theirs is very layered and complicated. It is definitely could be classed as technical metal. Oh. <laughs> I think the one kind of small complaint I do have about the album is it does sound kind of samey sometimes. Which kind of goes against the entire technical side of things, but... We thought the songs came across as being a little bit too long, maybe? Most of them average, like, a good six, six and a bit long. Yeah, I, I did get that feeling myself. It, as I said, it gets a bit tiring, and part of the reason is that some of the songs are not different enough. Hmm. That was good, but I don't think there's necessarily enough variation for them to be six minutes long. <laughs> yeah. About the ten tracks on the album, like, six of them are over six minutes long. Hmm. I would say that the title track is one of the best tracks on the album. Yeah, I don't know. That. I mean, the one that stood to me actually was um, Ivory Tower. Hmm. Something about the kind of structure just made me more... It's kind of course, but this is quite one of the shorter ones, so only five minutes. Yeah. What's well, interesting stands out is the ending of Stifled. Mm. Not... Yeah. Like the last kind of minute and a half of it is just very kind of ambient and just seems kind of unexpected because everything's been so heavy so far for the entire time. Yeah. But it's kind of just just like kind of weird ambient, just ambient, I mean, too many times in the last Yeah. <laughs> but this last minute and a half is mostly just guitar. There's no drums or anything, so it's going to kind of ethereal feel. It's like, oh, that's not what I expected at any point in this album. Which is... That's stifled. Yeah. That's stifled. Oh, just... <laughs> It's what you kind of need with albums like this. Things that you don't expect because otherwise you do fall into the quagmire of okay, can we ease up a bit? Because I did have to take a break during listening to this album. Um, Total score, I'd give it a 3.75 out of 5. I'll probably go with a 3.5. Yeah, if we go back to Ivory Tower just a second, in the bit of like, Mr. Stand Out is like kind of bit about three minutes in. Mm. Coming from there onwards, like nearly to the end, it's almost completely instrumental. Okay. Um, so we're gonna do, there's actually what, some kind of semblance of a guitar solo, I guess. Then. It just kind of stops and then kind of starts off again. It's like, yeah, that that's different. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's more bits in the album that are like that. I'll probably enjoy it more. Yeah. But if I ever wanted to just, you know, slam my skull directly into the side of a 
a rude roller, then yeah, this is a good album. <laughs> Occasionally, that's what you need. Yeah. You don't have to work one day and be like, fuck everything, I'm just gonna mush up myself to death. <laughs> Uh, next album, Epica, The Holographic Principle. I'm a symphonic metal. Yeah. Um, now, just just to start out, because this is a bit of a tricky one to cover, because it's technically a two-disc album, but the second disc is very different to the first disc, so... And Pierce hasn't listened to the second lot. I kind of finished up the main part of it right before we started recording. So. Yeah. I kind of had a quick, like, 30 second look into it, and I was like, yep, yeah, that's different. Yeah. Uh, so we'll we'll just cover the main part, because the bonus disc is only available to people buying it on Amazon and things like that, and seeing as they actually whittled it down to the 12 tracks in, on the main al- album or 18 no it was they whittled it down to 18 and they released the main album with 12 and well there's so much stuff they apparently started out with 27 tracks and then whittled it down to 18 whittled it down to 18 and released the main album with 12 of those um now the holographic principle is actually it is kind of a concept album in that it's based around the idea that reality is some sort of hologram projection kind of thing. I was that one TV program I saw about Morgan Freeman say, explaining that maybe our universe is being played like a game by some god being. <laughs> That's really weird. I'd be kind of terrified if that was true. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, as far as the Epica goes, I did listen to their first album. Mm-hmm. I can't remember why now. But back in like 2006 or so when it came out, and I haven't really listened to them much since then, so a bit of all my opinions of this are going on that rather than in everything that's coming between. I've dipped in and out of their music. I, I've heard a fair few of their tracks, but nothing from a solid album until now. Uh, but this is fairly par for the course for them, in, you know. And when I say par for the course, I mean it, it sounds a lot... It, it's one of those, it's... I'm stumbling over my words here. Basically, um, it does sound like Epica, and... Well, it's, it's got all the elements I'd expect from Epica. Symphonic, metal, choirs, and the main female vocalist, the occasional male vocalist in the background. Yeah. Well, and the background, but lesser focus on the male vocalist. Yeah. I know that Simon, Simone Summons, or however the player you pronounce her name, the main vocalist, has been around since the start, and she's got a very good voice. Mm. Which seems to be still perfectly intact here. But yeah, it's really, really good. I think it probably is, um, I'm going to listen to it a few times to kind of fully get it. Yeah. But on first impressions, I am pretty impressed with this thing, and I may well go and see if I can find a copy to buy. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to end up with most of these albums in my collection, I swear. <laughs> One thing that did strike me with this album, when I first played it, uh, the first track, um, Idola, or Idola. Idola? I, I, Eidolon? I assume it's like Eidolon, so... It is derived from Eidolon, so... It's probably Eidolon, yeah. Uh, For those who don't know, Eidolon is basically... um, It's a Greek term for a sort of a spiritual representation of something, but not quite a spirit. Uh, I think that's how it... I was looking it up the... Huh? (laughs) Mythical shit. (laughs) Yeah. I was looking it up the other day, and it's sort of like... um, one thing that must stand out to me is the track titles on this album are really pretty cool. Mm. Just to know, song titles are like Universal Death Squad or Dream State Armageddon. Mm. It's like, yep, these just sound either really cool or just like the names of Doom maps or something, isn't it? Well, <laughs> I mean, Dream State Armageddon, that sounds like. I'm trying to think, that's that almost sounds like a wrestling team. Dream State Armageddon it sounds kind of. I don't know. Non-Euclidean, I guess. <laughs> mm. Not necessarily Non-Euclidean, but that kind of style of things, like it's just the destruction of your subconscious, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, my personal favourites on the album are between Divide and Conquer and Beyond the Matrix. 
Like a pretty good combo. It, it's one of those, I, I think I'd just listen to both of them back to back because I wouldn't be able to choose between them. Well, it's like the one bit on the new Pantabeta album where there's two Assault 2112 and the other one. The Call 2112 and Assault even, that just kind of go into each other. Yeah. And need to be together. Yeah. Um, one of the ones that stands out to me significantly is Dancing in a Hurricane because that's just, that feels like a complete tonal shift for a good chunk of it. I did notice something out when I was listening through it, I was like, oh. This song sounds kind of different. I looked it up when it was that song. So, mm. the thing, one thing that really sounds to me is "Once Upon a Nightmare." Yeah, because that song I sound it mostly because it's a lot. It's kind of ballady, I guess. Mm. It kind of makes you think of oh, what's it called? It just think a little bit of Nightwish. Mm. I'm not particularly a fan of Nightwish, but this song kind of comes across as their kind of stuff, but better, I guess. <laughs> also, it's got a lot of almost just. Just Simone, Simone's on her own, just singing without really much else going on, and she really shows off her voice very nicely. Though I was like, yes, this is good. Hmm. Ah, just a quick thing. Um, an eidolon is a spirit image of a living or dead person, a shade or phantom look-alike of the human form. Um, there. Anyway, uh, of course, you saying like Nightwish, but better. I'm sort of like. I mean, I am a fan of Nightwish, but only up until before Tarja left. I am not say I never really was that much of a fan of Tarja's voice. It just never clicked with me. Whereas... A lot of people would probably kill me for that, but yeah. <laughs> I just never particularly got on with it. I mean, I absolutely hate... Um, I hated the woman they had immediately after Tarja. I, I couldn't... I remember who was. I couldn't stand her voice, it was just really... It was too poppy, you know, it was sort of like, you have a pop voice, and you're singing for a symphonic metal band. Mm. What? Well, that's what I like about um, Simone's voice, is she has that operatic style to it. Well, she can do, at least, if she wants to. And that works very well with this kind of style of music. Mm. With symphonic metal, it's kind of a, you need that big voice. Hmm. Also, the fact that Epica uses a lot of kind of choral parts as well, which just works to amplify that as well. Uh, just looking up, that explains why I can stand some of Nightwish's more recent stuff, because they've got flaws. Huh? They changed again, didn't they? Yeah, um, after Annette Olsen, they got Floor Jansen. Oh yeah. I need to listen to more after forever. Yeah. I really do. <laughs> I listened to some of their stuff and I really enjoyed it, so... I came across their stuff by accident. There was a period of a few years ago where I was listening to a lot of kind of female fronted symphonic metals, including Epica all the time. But Otter Forever was one of the other ones I got into. So let's get back to that at some point. Same with Epica, they kind of I listened to it for a bit and then kind of stopped. So I don't even know why. I think I just my music taste changed a bit and I just stopped listening to it. But going back to it now, with this album, for example, I was like, why did I ever stop? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of the opposite of me with Tool or Alice in Chains and sort of listen to it and go. Why did I never get into this? This is awesome. There's so many bands out there that we probably haven't even heard of at this point, but we'll get into in a couple of years and be like, why did they not know about this? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what would your overall score for the album be? I'd probably say a 4.5. It's really quite a solid album, and I think, unlike the other, some of the other albums, the ordering of the tracks seems pretty much spot on. Mm. But the only thing I'd change is I'd probably move... Oh, uh, which one was it? I th- I think it was a cosmic algorithm. Mm-hmm. It'd probably sound better like playing right after Idler. Fair dues. Because that opening, all the kind of chant, the choral opening will work really well to start off the album, I reckon. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's what so... I was going to say about Idler. It actually put me in mind of a lot of film trailers these days. Right down to the <laughs> inception. Boom! <laughs> Well, it's reckon they're going from that opening and then just immediately going straight into that choral opening of the Cosmic Hour and they'll work really well. Yeah. So. Uh, I would actually... More than that. For me, I actually give it a 5 out of 5. And there's one thing that could well grow on me as well. Mm. Yeah, pretty much all the albums we've reviewed, I've been listening to like once. <laughs> so. Without going too much into it, because you've not listened to it and it is profoundly different to the rest of the album, um, the second part, I'd say, gets a 4 out of 5, because it's enjoyable, but it does cause a bit of musical whiplash, because it's such a dramatic shift, because you go from symphonic metal to 
more sort of acoustic folk rock kind of style. I suppose if anyone actually, you know, bought the album and then put it into a CD player, they'd have to actually change the disc before that happened. Mm. So it wouldn't really cause a problem there, but anyone that's actually going to you know, download it via whatever means, or copy it all into a program and listen to it in one go, they're going to get that. Um, yeah, overall, so that would mean it does end up getting a 4.5 out of 5 if you add those scores together and average it. Um, Finally, 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 the last album, Testament, The Brotherhood of the Snake. Yep, yes, that's the one. <laughs> oh my god, I love this album so much. In fact, I, I think I, 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 need, I need to... Now, this is the time where I'm unironically using this voice. Oh my god, this is the greatest album I've heard in my life! Not the greatest, but it's certainly... <laughs> It is awesome. I mean, it's basically a... Now, Brotherhood of the Snake, you might just... You look at that and not think much of it until you listen to it and you suddenly realise what the snake is in reference to. <laughs> well, yeah, it is a very solid thrash metal. Yeah, I mean, I've been waiting for quite a while for a good, solid thrash metal album. Um, and this is what I've been waiting for. I mean... It's a thrash metal album about the fucking apocalypse. And it's by testament. I mean... Can't argue with that. Again, we get to the... The only way it could be made better is if Devin Townsend was somehow on it. <laughs> because, well... I'm just going to say the score now, because fuck it. I love this album. I want it tattooed on my ass. I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> Oh dear God! What in, what did I just say? Um, <laughs> but seriously, um, six revelations out of five. <laughs> yes, I I love this album so much that I am giving it a six out of five. It's an album that you have to listen to from start to finish. I mean, it is a concept album. You, the concepts might seem to um, waver slightly, sort of round track five, but when you actually think of it in context to everything else it actually makes sense i mean songs like the pale king seven seals centuries of suffering those songs are just if you are a thrash fan you need to listen to this in fact if you're a metal fan of any kind listen to this album i i it's pretty good i um, personally i do have a few problems with it in fact, i feel like it actually kind of Drags out a little bit in the middle, I'd say. Because, mm. I mean, Brother of the Snake, the title track, and The Pale King start out really fucking strong. Mm. Seven Seals is decent. And then, I think that's kind of just kind of middles together with a little bit in my head until somewhere around that blackjack at the end, where it just gets really fucking good again. Fair enough. All I can say is, for me, I was just, yes, 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 yes! <laughs> aha! 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 I know we're a few days after Halloween, but I thought I'd make the thing, no, it reference even. Ha ha ha! Not one, not two, but three days late. Um, but yeah, it. I mean, it's a pounding, forceful shotgun blast of an album, and it <laughs> doesn't let up. But it's a shotgun full of snakes. Maybe my opinion was coloured by how I was feeling at the time, but if you're in a bad mood. This is an album to listen to because you're just sort of like, yes, fuck yeah, fuck everything, fuck, fuck. You end up swearing like a sailor. Um, but yeah, definitely get this album, download it, listen through it, then buy it, then listen through it again, then find vinyl version of it, then listen through it again. <laughs> then get a vinyl version, put the CD version inside it and listen to them both at the same time. Not sure that would work. Shh. Screw your logic. 
you can do it still, you know, play both versions. If we put like a CD player in a CD player, hi fi system, and put a vinyl on a record player, and also put the digital version on your PC and play all three of them at the same time through two separate surround sound systems. That'd be doable, it would just be very logistically difficult because you'd have to time it within a nanosecond of each other. On the other hand, you'd have three copies of this thing playing through three separate high end sound systems all within the same room. And then your face would melt. <laughs> Not as much as you play with sugar. Oh god. Now that wouldn't be face melting, that would be body melting. If you wouldn't melt, you'd probably just vibrate so much that, you know, like, can I, you know, vibrate crystals, they shatter, like that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love this album and I cannot recommend it enough. I must admit, I don't recall the last time I heard a thrash album that was this good. In fact, I don't even remember the last time I even listened to that much thrash. I think the last thrash I listened to was Megadeth, newest album, which is just not too bad, actually. Mm. Uh, not as good as this. Yeah. Uh, so what would your score be? Probably 3.75. Just to make it even more awkward. <laughs> like a point system, I'm going to go with a double point system. I think I said, if the middle tracks kind of stood out more to me, or maybe it's just a case of I've listened to like four albums since then. Uh, You've got a similar problem to me. The only reason I'm able to remember this well enough is because I enjoyed it so much. Mm. This was the first thing I listened to today. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's still a pretty good album, and I would certainly not hesitate to recommend it if you like Thrash. I'm not the hugest of fan of Thrash Metal anyway, more of a kind of Doom or Prog or post-metal fan as it is rather than Thrash, but if you like Thrash, definitely go for it. Uh, whereas I actually grew up listening to thrash metal, so um, I will say this much: Testament should have been headlining on on the Friday stage at Bloodstock because Testament, it's fucking Testament. You, I mean, you choose them to be the special guest under Machine Head. The fuck are you doing, Bloodstock? Testament should be top billing. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean. I, I would genuinely, I would actually genuinely argue that they should be one of the top four in, of Thrash. Yeah, I'm surprised they aren't, honestly. Didn't they didn't come out like, a little bit later on, though. That's the main reason, well, the only reason, really, why. Uh, let me just check. I think they were, not, not by much, but I think they were a little bit later on compared to the other, the main four. Um, they were formed in 1983. Oh, so they were around the same time, then. So, yeah, I mean, it's sort of like, why is Slayer still regarded as one of the big four? Because they had three albums that were decent. <laughs> that wasn't even necessarily my opinion as much as it was just paraphrasing many other people that have been saying the same thing. Because mm. I don't think I've ever heard anyone really mention anything other than those three albums. Yeah. Slayer was 81, Metallica was 82. Uh, or was it 81? No, I think it was 8. No, Metallica were 81. Megadeth, I believe, were 83 as well. Mm. Yep, I actually got one of them right, that Megadeth were 83. Nice. And Anthrax... Oh, should have specified that. <laughs> so, Anthrax, Metallica and Slayer were 81, Megadeth were 83, so you can't even say... It was timing, yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, but anyway, yeah. Uh, that's it for the albums we're covering. Uh, yeah, that is everything, and that doesn't include, like, a bunch of other stuff we haven't covered. Yeah. Well, I can think of, like, three albums off the top of my head that came out that period that we haven't covered. So, yeah. No, four, actually. Think about We were already at a dozen, so it's sort of like, ah! <laughs> this has been a good couple of months of music. Yeah. But anyway, next reviews, um... Definitely going to be covering the new Metallica album when that comes out. I'm going to want to cover the new Hammerfall album. I've got that as well, so... Yeah. I haven't heard Hammerfall in a while, but they're pretty good power metal. So. Yeah. Uh, don't know what else we'll be covering. I'll have a look at the listings and we can figure out, but... I think we can definitely say Hammerfall and Metallica will be the next two reviews. We hope. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think basically how we're going to have to operate this is I just grab you on whatever day you've got free. <laughs> Whenever that is. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So you've heard from us... Well, Pierce liked everything. 
pretty much, actually, yeah. I don't think there's anything here that I wouldn't listen to again, which is pretty impressive, because it's, you know, a dozen albums, well, 11, because it doesn't tip me though, but... I liked most of the albums, but... Uh, I'm just going to refer to them as Beaker from now on. And this surprises me, because I would thought you'd just not refer to them ever again. No, I just mean when you bring them up, I'll just refer to them as Beaker. Because undoubtedly you will bring them up. Why would I ever do that? Because you're a massive troll. Fair point. <laughs> <laughs> Touché. What was the Beaker album even called? Uh, Let Me Be Your Heroine. Even the title Locker. of the album sucks. It's on par with fucking um, Enrique Iglesias with I Can Be Your Hero Baby. Ugh, that's even worse. It makes anything that uses the word baby is just horrendous. Yeah. What's the Valkyrie album actually called Trap, or is it Valkyrie Trap? No, Valkyrie Trap is the title. Right. By Valkyrie. <laughs> the other one's Valkyrie Attack. Okay. So you've heard from me what the depths of hatred have been in this album pile, and the absolute heights. And you've heard Pierce liking everything. Some, some stuff yeah, but it feels like it's kind of a reverse of our anime opinions, where you'll score things far lower than I will. That's because there's usually a lot more to hate when it comes to visual media compared to music. Because this music is like, oh, it sounds shit, therefore it's shit. Any visual media is like, oh, it sounds shit, it looks shit, it's acted like shit, the script's shit, direction shit, camera work shit. <laughs> This is when we start reviewing music videos and we have to talk about that side of things. Well, a music video means we can totally, you know, do a me 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 music video because part of their entire gimmick is the fact that music video is entirely animated. You realise if you if we do that, I will kill you. <laughs> I'm not even joking. But literally, their entire thing is that they're being audio visual. It is. Um. Anyway. Uh. That's it for this episode. We'll catch you probably at the Hammerfall review. Yeah. That's goodbye from me. Goodbye from me.